guys, welcome back to another video, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, most people know me on here on Instagram as ZA Reptiles, and this is Potato, one of my crusted geckos. And today we're going to give you my top 10 list for beginner reptiles. Now, I don't have like a strict opinion on what a beginner reptile is. I think pretty much any reptile could be your first reptile with enough research, preparation, and commitment. So what you get as your beginner first time reptile really depends on you and how prepared you make yourself. So I don't necessarily like to say beginner reptile implying that this is like the only type of animal you can have if you've never had reptiles before. I don't think that's true. Some people are very good at researching and preparing themselves for an animal. And so there isn't really beginner, like you have to have these type of animals starting out kind of thing, in my opinion. But for the sake of the topic, I'm going to name my top 10 beginner reptiles. And when I say beginner, it's more so in the sense that these reptiles are a little bit more low maintenance. So if you're just working your way into owning reptiles and you want to start off kind of easy and not jump way in, going nuts, these would be a good fit for you. So more specifically, these are reptiles that don't require UVB and and they have pretty easy diets. So in my opinion, UVB So in my opinion, UVB is probably the most complicated part of keeping reptiles. And then of course, there's those that have complicated diets needing veggies and bugs or some sort of meat. So this list is those that don't require UVB and have a pretty easy diet. Before I jump in, I do want to say I do believe all reptiles benefit from having UVB. I'm in the process of giving all of my animals UVB and some of the animals that I'm going to mention on this list do have UVB or plans to have UVB. So such as they don't require it, they do benefit from it. So these are animals that you could certainly start off without UVB without a problem and the more you grow and advance and you're ready to move forward, you could then later give them UVB. So it's, these are animals that it's not crucial to give it to them, but keep in mind all animals do benefit from having UVB exposure. So 9 out of 10 animals on this list I do personally own. There are others I could have put on this list probably, but I don't have experience with them. So I wanted to make this list from my own personal experience. So I could really speak on that and understand what I'm talking about. So number one on the list is obviously crested geckos. Crested geckos, pretty easy. You can tell potato handles very well. I also have Pip, my other crested gecko, but I don't handle her as much anymore now that I have potato because she does have a tail and I want to keep it that way. Though she does tolerate handling very well, I'm very paranoid about her tail. So the reason I got potato was he's my education gecko. So any education programs, I'm using potato because he doesn't have a tail. So the stress and paranoia about that is gone with the potato. So keep in mind, they can drop their tail. So that part is a little stressful sometimes, but sometimes you find geckos already like potato that don't have their tail and there's no stress then. So crested gecko enclosures are fun to set up. They are gonna need a taller enclosure because they are arboreal, spending a lot of time up high. Um, in Potato's case, he loves to hide in his plants. Pip hides in a cork bark tube on the wall. They're also one of the easiest reptiles to feed because they can eat powdered food. So Pangea, or Pashi, um, trying to think who else has powdered food mixes for crested geckos. But basically, it's powder, you mix with water, it's like ketchup consistency, and that's what they eat. Now, keep in mind, they will also eat insects. So you do want to give them insects now and then into their diet so they have a well-rounded diet. But there is also or pashi or like um, Pangea powdered food that does include insects in it. So that would be good to have on hand to kind of rotate your food. Again, variety is key when you're keeping animals. So being able to switch up the flavors they're getting and working in one with insects would be good, but very easy to feed. No one on this list really needs to be fed every single day. So very easy. The hardest part with crusted geckos is going to be maintaining their humidity, so you are going to have to spray them down, but personally I just spray them down in the morning and at night, and that seems to be all that they need. So nothing too crazy, the hardest part is just the humidity that they need, but that's just spraying them down. 
so number two on the list is going to actually be my first snake and that was a corn snake so my corn snake's actually a little crazy typically they're a little more docile than she is now she's not mean or aggressive by any means she just doesn't sit <laughs> she's constantly moving now the corn snake i worked with at the zoo when i worked there was like a quarter of her size or a third of her size and very calm so corn snakes do make great first time snakes or beginner reptiles they again they don't need uvb her enclosure is actually up top there so she does have uvb but doesn't necessarily need it she, she wasn't given that uvb until like december and i've had her for three years now typically can do a bit of a smaller enclosure she is a very big corn snake so she does have a four by two enclosure that i had to have made or i could have made it myself but depending on the size of your corn snake you can sometimes get a right get away with a 40 gallon breeder though i do recommend bigger is better but overall very easy to care for they don't have any crazy humidity needs so usually your average bedroom has the humidity that they need they only need to get fed as an adult really every other week every two weeks um phoenix gets fed like every other week or every three weeks and in general very good temperament i don't think i've ever seen a mean corn snake so very good we we're back to geckos and that is a leopard gecko you guys probably knew that would be on the list that seems to be a very common beginner reptile that was the first reptile i ever had we still have them zephyr my family gecko but i also have queso my personal gecko now they are insectivores so you are going to need to have live bugs on hand however if you go with dubia roaches which are a very good nutritious sta staple they're very easy to breed so you could essentially just buy a bunch of adults and then just have food going so running itself with no extra cost to you so you can save quite a bit of money that way they also don't have super high temperature needs they don't have high humidity needs you can now don't hold me to this but you can use a heat mat to give them heat a lot of people use heat mats or heat tapes please get a thermostat if you're going that route i personally prefer overhead heating for my animals because it's more natural though queso and zephyr both do have heat mats right now um zephyr actually also has overhead heating though queso her setup she's in right now doesn't allow me to do overhead heating but when she gets her next upgrade i will be doing halogen bulbs she will have overhead heating just like some of my other animals that we're going to mention later in the video but starting off you can give them heat using a heat mat as long as you use a thermostat it's very easy but overhead heating is also a very great option as well sand boas if i had to recommend a beginner snake like hands down beginner first time just trying to get comfortable with snakes i would absolutely say a sand boa they're overall very docile i know there are just like any species there's gonna be those few exceptions but in general sand boas tend to be very docile I mean even if they're not they're very small and their mouths are very small so but going off of that point they are a small species of a snake so they're not going to get humongous so you're not going to need this humongous setup for them their food is going to be relatively small which means it's going to be more inexpensive compared to what an adult milk snake might eat or a big boa and just like the leopard gecko not nothing crazy for humidity they they do come from Africa in more dry areas, so you're not going to need to go crazy trying to maintain humidity. They're easy to handle. They have these derpy cute faces, and you can heat them using overhead heating or heating mat. Back to geckos again, we're just going to flip flop gargoyle geckos. So gargoyle geckos are very similar to crested geckos, just crested geckos I feel like are a little more popular. A lot more people have them. You see them in pet stores. Gargoyle geckos, one and the same just different <laughs> so what i mentioned for crested geckos already just take all that information apply it to gargoyle geckos so our boreal enclosure powdered food you name it now i will say for gargoyles though you're going to want to find one that has been readily handled that has a good temperament because their bites are no joke not that i've experienced it but so i heard i never really thought about it in my head they were just another version of like a crested gecko and then when I got mine, Tula, um, I had some people ask me if, how her temperament was because they heard their bites were nasty. I had never even heard that. 
So then I started researching and sure enough, their bites were comparable to a lychee, who is the biggest gecko species. And some people mentioned tokay geckos, but a lot of people that had been bitten by tokays said that they weren't quite on the level of a tokay, but challenging the level of a tokay. So I wouldn't want to get bit by Tula at all. <laughs> But luckily she has a very good personality so if you can find one with a great personality great temperament that is handled readily either being rehomed or by the breeder then i would definitely say gargoyle geckos tula is super sweet and she's no harder than potato and pip very easy and very unique so they're gonna be a little more pricey than crested geckos typically but very pretty very similar to milk or very similar to corn snake is gonna be milk snakes so my milk snake, I will say, is a little more crazy than my um, corn snake, so a little more of a handful, but care-wise, very easy, pretty much the same as my corn snake. Nothing crazy for humidity, nothing crazy for the heat. You can use a heat mat, you can use overhead heating. UVB is not required, just like everything on this list. Relatively small species of snake, nothing crazy. They're not going to get super huge, they're not going to be tiny like a sand boa, but they're like an average size snake very very good i have done a comparison video between milk snakes and corn snakes if you want to check that out i will link it below i've done a couple comparison videos actually and i have a comparison video planned between gecko species i just haven't done it yet but that video will come eventually moving on next on the list is fat-tailed geckos so just like how I said the gargoyle to me is like another version of a crested gecko, the fat tail geckos to me are another version of a leopard gecko. So the only difference I really have with those two is fat tail geckos, you need to supply a little more humidity than you would for a leopard gecko. So half of their enclosure is more of a humid side with moss and whatnot and live plants that I spray down. The other side's a little drier, or a little warmer, but nothing crazy that a beginner can't achieve with a spray bottle. Now they're gonna have a dye like a leopard gecko, so you're gonna need live insects. But again, super easy to breed doobie roaches, or if you could find crickets, they can have mealworms, which are easy to breed. I would not give mealworms as a staple though, it's a good treat. Doobie roaches are my main go-to. I know they're illegal in some places though, so understandable if you need to go with other options. Okay, moving on, some other king snakes. They're very similar to milk snakes. Milk snakes and king snakes, are they even different? So other king snake species are pretty much the same as milk snakes and corn snakes. So if you want a snake, king snakes would be another option. I'm gonna wait for that mister to be done. Okay, this next one I almost didn't put on here. I kind of thought about it, but just based off my own personal experience, I had no problem putting it on this list. And that is ball pythons. So. You hear ball pythons are good beginner reptiles, but you also hear they're not because of their tendency to go off of food. Now, Snicket, my banana ball python, who I've had since a baby, he's fantastic, never missed a meal, super sweet. I would highly recommend them for beginners off of Snicket. Kalua is my adult ball python. I got him as an adult about two years ago? No, a little over a year ago. So I haven't had Kahlua too long. But when I got Kahlua, he was on a food strike. He was not a consistent eater. However, what I did for him was just not beat him. I let him tell me when he was ready. We were also going into winter, and I find snakes do go off feed sometimes in winter. They just, they know what's going on outside. And I live in New York. So I just let him, let me know when he was hungry. So eventually, I saw him moving around his enclosure a lot, exploring hunting if you will so that's when I started leaving a rat in his enclosure and it just disappeared so eventually he did come out of it on his own sometimes in drastic measures you will have to force feed however I have very rarely seen people that have that it comes to that so I am putting ball pythons on this list based on my own personal experience if you have a ball python that is refusing food don't freak out let them do their thing track their weight to make sure they're not rapidly losing weight because that could be a sign that something is wrong and that they need to see a vet but they just miss a couple meals it's really no big deal there's no reason to panic so now Kalu is a great eater he doesn't miss a meal either and he tong feeds before he wouldn't tong feed I had to leave it in there and hope that disappeared overnight now he tong feeds no problem 
So sometimes it's just patience letting the animal figure it out. So again, nothing crazy with them. They're great for handling. They move super slow. They're typically very calm. So for a milk snake and a corn snake, or just gonna be zip, zip, zip. They're fun to handle, but not fun to just sit with. A ball python is gonna be more fun to just sit with because they're much slower moving. They're a little girthier and thicker. So sometimes they're a little easier to handle because there's more snake there to hold on to. You can heat them using a heating pad or overhead heating. So there's overall, their care is very, very simple for a snake. All right, and the last one on this list, number 10, it's actually one I don't own, but one I want. So I've done the research for them and I needed 10 animals for this list. So I put them on and that is Chinese cave geckos. I wanted something a little more unique that I could put on this list. It's not just the same animals you always hear on these lists. So Chinese cave geckos, they're another terrestrial gecko, like leopard geckos and fat-tailed geckos. They're not gonna need UVB. They're about the same size as those geckos. So very, very similar. So another good one to add to this list. So those are my top 10 beginner, easy for beginners getting into the hobby animals. So they're not gonna require a whole lot of extra work or a lot of attention from you. They're not gonna need a ton of daily maintenance other than making sure they have clean water and maybe spraying down if you're getting something like a crested gecko. They don't need UVB, although they will benefit from it. They don't need UVB. So they're very good for starting out because you don't have to try to understand UVB and all the complicated parts of it. So if you want to just start off easy, then this is the list of animals that I would recommend to you. All right. So thank you guys as always for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on more. And we'll see you for the next video. Bye.